السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We always praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his entire household, all his companions, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us and grant us goodness in this world and the next. My beloved brothers and sisters, if I have a big boulder or a rock that is blocking the path here, and if I were to try and push it and I was unable to push it, what would I do? I would turn back and I would look at you, wouldn't I? And what would you do? Would you just look at me and say, hi? Is that what would happen? I think so many people would rush to my assistance that the rock would just look at them and move. Don't you think so? Okay, maybe I'm being a little bit sarcastic. But what I mean is, so many would come to my help that I didn't need to worry how big the rock was. I would know that there are enough people here, just two of them or three of them would be able to help me move the rock and I will be able to open this path, not just for myself, but for everyone else as well. So... Why am I starting that way? Because if you take a look at community, just the word community, there is a com. That com has got nothing to do with the internet. Dot com, no, nothing, nothing. Com and then unity. Without the unity, there's no community. You need to remember this. And unity is very different from difference of opinion. You could have difference of opinion. We all have differences of, of opinion. 100% of us, including those who really care for each other. Husband and wife don't agree on things. They really don't have the, right, the, the, the same opinion on everything. But they love each other enough to be able to you know, progress in life and become parents. So much so that even when they do have differences that are seemingly quite major, they are taught that if you'd like success... For yourselves and for your children, make sure you discuss your differences behind closed doors. Don't we say that to our, our, you know, those who are prospective, mashallah, husband and wife, or those who have hassles. Don't yell at your wife or your husband in the presence of your children, screaming, shouting, and getting excited beyond the limit to say, you know what, why do you have roast chicken? I wanted roast beef. Big deal, mashallah. Big deal, we can have roast beef, roast chicken, but be careful of what you are portraying to your offspring. They will grow up thinking that this is normal and they will do it with everyone. When they have a difference of opinion, they will start swearing in public and they will scream and yell. Irresponsible, childish behavior. And that continues into adulthood because it was unchecked. And this is why for us to live as a community, we need to understand we need to really understand what is it that is required of me in society and in community so that I can contribute positively. Bearing in mind that as a Muslim, something known as an ummah is more important than the individual I am. The ummah. It is an ummah. And I want to give you a few examples. But before I give these examples, let's go back to this uh, issue of husband and wife. We always say, and we've said this every single time, you can never have two people who think exactly the same. Is there anyone here who thinks that they think exactly the same as someone else on the earth? Anyone? No. Not even one. Not even brothers. Not even father with child. You might have similarities. But there will always be a certain difference. That's Allah's plan. Because it's part of your test. How do you live with one another when you are different? You are really different. You think differently. You have a different mind in the, in the sense that some of the major items you might be thinking similarly regarding them. But there will always be differences. And these differences, subhanallah, do not mean that you are disunited. And this is why if we were taught to stop talking to those whom we disagreed with, nobody would be speaking to anybody across the globe. We would all be individual people. Brother, I don't like the color you're wearing. So therefore... I'm not talking to you. And that's it. And then what happens? You go home and your son says, Dad, I don't like the phone you're using. I'm not talking to you. And wife says, You're smelling. I'm not talking to you. And husband says, The perfume of God is giving me a headache. I'm not talking to you. So nobody is talking to anyone, but all these issues I'm mentioning, they are petty. They are small. And even if you have a major issue, believe me, the 
intelligent from amongst us would understand the method of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the kuffar of Quraysh. And these were disbelievers in Quraysh. He did not use a method of silence. Rather, he engaged them even more. And he went out to speak to them so much so that at one stage the Quran came in to say, don't turn away from this blind man who, who was Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum. These are the kuffar of Quraysh. You're giving them, you're lending them an ear. You're listening to them, not realizing that you've just turned your back with this particular man. Allahu Akbar. You know the verses, عَبَسَ وَتَوَلَّا أَن جَاءَهُ الْأَعْمَى وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّا it is Surah Abbas, the third surah in the 30th part of the Quran. I'd like you to go through the first few verses in meaning. A little bit of homework we can give you inshallah. And go and see why it was revealed. And some of the opinions of the scholars. It is not because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's example was imperfect. A'udhu billah. No, not at all. Rather because his example was so perfect that we were taught you must accept admonition. You must know that no matter how high you are, no matter who you think you are, if Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was corrected and he took correction in order for us to learn a lesson from, not because he needed it or there was anything wrong with him, but Allah made him go through something intentionally so that the lesson could come to me and you when I have a difference, when I am corrected, how should I handle it? But going back to the lesson derived there from, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was engaging with the kuffar of Mecca in such beautiful discussion with such great character and conduct that they looked at the beauty of Islam they taught meaning they saw the beauty of Islam they turned towards Islam they accepted the deen in a lot of cases if not most cases later on and then they practiced it and they put it into practice and teach or taught others engaged in teaching it to others and this is something that happened solely because he engaged them in discussion so for a person to think that, you know what, because I have a difference of opinion, I must start labeling you, number one. This is a problem. I must stop talking to you, number two. I must spread every single thing bad about you, number three. Number four is, you know what people do today without knowing you? They, they would lie about you just because they heard about you, something from someone else. It happens to all of us, without exception, but on different levels. Where, if I were to ask you, Okay, let's ask, mashallah. Is there anyone from amongst us whom nobody has ever spoken bad about? Put up your hand. There you are. Not a single hand. You see that? In fact, if I can't see your hand, stand up. Let's see you. Nobody in your life has spoken bad about you. Stand up. Not one. Subhanallah. This would mean that that is part of your test. It's part of every one of our tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People will say bad things about you. But don't you belong to the same community? Don't you belong to the same family? Okay, can I ask you a little bit more interesting question? How many of us can say comfortably from our larger family? I'm talking of family. Larger family, those who are related to you. How many of us can comfortably say that nobody who's related to me has ever spoken bad about me? Put up your hand. Wow, we closed the circle quite drastically. Did you see that? And still we have a problem. Subhanallah. Problem meaning it's part of your challenge. So how are you going to address this? You need to rise to it knowing if it happens to every single person. It means it's part of Allah's plan. And this is why we have so many examples in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is a difference between me differing with you in opinion and disunity. As in I'm disunited with you and so on. I need to speak bad about you. I need to uh, make sure that you are harmed. That you you don't come up and so on. If a person is doing well in business, we become jealous. Why jealous? Because subhanallah, why does he have? I don't have. This man came in from overseas somehow. He stays here and in about five years, he's already become very wealthy. I cannot stomach that. I've been here for 50 years and I'm still a person who's struggling to make ends meet. Well, believe me that jealousy is what's making you struggle even further. Subhanallah, that's what drags you, bogs you down. But if you say, Alhamdulillah, oh Allah, you've blessed this man in five years, he's got so much, bless him even more. Ya Allah, bless me too. Allahu Akbar, mashallah.
You see, this is how we go as Muslimin. We are taught this, to be honest. You see something good, don't just say, why does he have it? He's a this, he's a that, he's not supposed to. So we go, and this is what happens. We go to all of the clients and we start telling them, this man, don't buy from him. You know, he's a bad man. He supports this and he does that. And he drinks and he goes to the club and we lie. And even if we're telling the truth, it's out of jealousy. Our struggle is to put someone down. By us putting someone down, by us putting the whole world down, it does not make us any better. No, we have not worked on ourselves. Rather, we have worked on trying to tell people how bad someone else is. And that's it. And this is why this seeps through all the way into religion. Where you see someone and they're doing hard work, very hard work, day and night. And sometimes shaitan creeps into our hearts and he starts telling us, you know what, this man is doing something overtaking you he's overtaking you so for as long as he wasn't overtaking me it's fine leave him on the side the minute he's overtaking me i have a problem so i need to say he's bad he does this he does that and he does this and that and this is why today on the global level i'd like to think and you know what i'm going to speak without gloves right i'd like to think that there is not a single scholar on the face of the earth whom nobody has spoken against just like how we have answered the question today about ourselves. So the test is yours. I have a policy and I invite all the other mashayikh to have a similar policy. Do constructive work. And you know what? People will see the light. Teach them constructively in a positive way. They will achieve the positivity. They will be able to learn a thing or two. And do you know what? Don't waste your time bothering about others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. If it is something major, you may want to highlight it. And that too in a very positive way. But you may not know. I give you an example. That every one of us makes mistakes. Every single one. When I make mistakes, in fact that hadith, the meaning of it is, all the children of Adam are prone to error or would make mistakes. And the best of those who, who err are those who constantly repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My business is to constantly turn to Allah. Yesterday someone sent me an email saying, I keep repeating the same sin and I ask Allah's forgiveness. Now I, I'm losing hope. What should I do? And I said, constantly repent. You fall, repent. You fall again, repent again. You fall again, repent again. And as many times as you have to do that. Because one day you will die. Let's hope you died just after having repented. May Allah grant us Jannah. But if you lose hope, and obviously this is another level. We are supposed to be quitting things for the, for the will of Allah. But if a person has a weakness and they've really repented, remember repentance, the minimum of four conditions you need. Admit your sin, admit it, regret it, ask Allah's forgiveness and promise not to do it again. Once those four conditions are met, you are forgiven. And if you have promised Allah, I won't do it again. Human nature makes you do it again after some time. Repent again similarly. And by the help of Allah, you will be forgiven even again. But you don't just say, you know what, I committed this and Ya Allah, forgive me, I won't do it again, I won't do it again. In the back of your mind, you're saying, ah, tomorrow, uh, last day. It doesn't work that way. It really doesn't work that way. We need to make sure that we have proper repentance. But the point I'm making is, every one of us makes mistakes. Isn't it our job to help one another through the path, rather than to attack one another through the path? So if I really love you, and if I really care for you, and I've seen you doing something wrong, a true Muslim would contact the person, either in person or someone very close to you, whom you perhaps would respect, raise the issue in a very respectful way such that we solve the problem not just go on to the internet and say the world knows what's happening and start blasting this person was in the nightclub this person this happened to them sometimes we don't even know why and how and sometimes our information is wrong you know there was one specific scholar quite a senior scholar and i met him and i told him you know sheikh you have made a very big mistake and the people around him were angry at me how can you say this I said, relax, he's not a Nabi of Allah. Remember this. He's not a prophet of Allah. I am a little ordinary nothing. But I think I have the right to say something. I said, you know the mistake you've made? You've believed those who are around you. Those who are around you told you something and you did not authenticate it. So you have harmed others with something that is incorrect and inaccurate. The man was crying. He was crying tears. Wallahi. Because why? He was a good man. But shaitan... Out of 
human nature, this man fell for some words that were told to him by those around him regarding someone else. And he did not know the reality and he just said it. That you know what? Yes, this is what happened and that's what happened. Whereas that was untrue and it harmed a great chunk of people. So I raised it and I was considered a bad egg because I said that. And people started saying, this man here is terrible and, he, and I don't mind. To be honest with you, terrible or not terrible. And I do not have the time in my life to sit back and start typing and start saying things about specific people. This man is like this and like that because I have my Jannah that I'm worried about and I hope we're all worried about the same Jannah. I have my paradise that I'm worried about and I would like you to be there as well. And the truth is, if I see you doing something that is wrong, by right, I will come to you, my beloved brother. Do you know what? This is what I heard. This is what I saw. I know it might not be any of my business, but I'm your brother. I don't intend to expose and so on. I just want to raise this issue. You might have an explanation and you might have a little Jazakallah khair. Thank you for raising this. I will bear it in mind and I really appreciate it. It was my weakness and I'm so, you know, I'm so thankful to Allah for sending an angel like you to come to me to tell me and correct me and so on. That's the way. This is how community will survive. This is how your family will survive. You tell your child, your child tells you. You tell your wife, your wife tells you. You tell your in-laws, they tell you. You tell your uncles, they tell you. You tell your relatives, they tell you. You tell community, they tell you in a beautiful way. But if someone wants to expose then it shows the intention is to disunite, not to discuss and not to be able to close in on the disagreement. And what this means, I can give you my own example. Someone sent me an email some time back saying, Sheikh, you know, you're a big deviant and you've done this and done that and so on. And to have a look at this clip. And I said, Subhanallah, you know what? I don't even want to look at the clip. But why not? I said, because if that person was genuine, they would have contacted me, that's all. They would have flown down to my city and said, my brother, there's something serious I need to talk to you about. But the fact that they've gone public, they do not want clarity. That's the thing. Because if they wanted clarity, they would not have done that. They would have come to you in person and said, listen, we are part of one ummah. You utter the shahada and I utter it. That is bottom line, our link. Now going further, we have heard this and this and we have seen this and this and we'd like to highlight it to you and perhaps give you a chance to explain yourself. Then I can engage you in discussion because I know you are genuine. And this is why when you are advising people, it's important to know how to do it. Because subhanallah, if shaitan overtakes your heart and for a moment you feel, I just want to show that I have the upper hand, you're at loss. You are cracking up the ummah. You are destroying the nation such that the enemy is so excited about what you are doing, they will cheer you on forever and ever. Today, the disaster of the ummah is not more so from the enemies of Islam. But believe me when I say it is from within, the damage from within is far greater than that ever that has happened from external sources. May Allah protect us. If I were to tell you who harms me in my life, I'll take names of Muslimin. If I were to ask you, every one of you, and I can ask you right now, and you will answer me. How many of us, if I were to ask you, who has harmed you in your life in a big way, and you have the name of a Muslim that comes up, put up your hand. Don't be shy. Who has harmed you in a big way, and you have the name of a Muslim in your heart and in your mind, put up your hand. Let's see the hands. There we are. Enough for us to know the damage that has been caused. And this is why when we talk of community, we need to understand without unity, there is no community. And at the same time, when we have a difference of opinion, we need to know how to deal with it. We will never, ever, ever, ever unite on one opinion. Never. Because even the Sahaba radiallahu anhum did not unite on one specific opinion. But we will have to discuss opinions because there is a scope of opinions that sometimes beyond that would probably be termed outside what is acceptable. That is there. We understand that. And we don't deny that. But within that scope, there will still be differences of opinion amongst us. We heard about them today. So it doesn't mean that just because I raise my hands, you don't raise your hands. I say Amin. You do not say Amin loud. You, also, you say it soft and so on. So suddenly I don't talk to you. I recall the masjid where I am. Uh, one brother did something differently. And after Salah, everybody turned around. And this was some time back. And everybody looked at him as though this is an alien from outer space. From outer space. And you know, he was about to talk to you in some strange language. And he's like, what happened here? Subhanallah. But that's how we treat members of the ummah. 
My brothers and sisters, it's important for us to know that we love each other for the sake of Allah. The minute you have the shahada, and I have the shahada, that already is a link that is powerful. Let's work now beyond that. Let's go deeper in a beautiful way, in a way that makes us feel already that we are connected. You know, sometimes you have Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki, Hanbali, Salafi, and everyone starts saying, this guy's like that, this guy's like that. You have shared the shahada as a starting point, my brothers and sisters. Do not forget that. There are people out there who are external enemies who are so excited. When we start raising these differences, they say, don't worry, for the next four decades, we don't need to look at the Muslims because there is no ways that they can progress. The way they are, they will only be destroying themselves. Why? They are not a community. Unity. That's what it is. They are fragmented and they are small and they are completely disunited. And guess what? They are not just fighting each other, they are killing each other. There you are. You have a starting point. It is a starting point. People might say, what about this? What about that? Brother, work on your starting point. But don't go below it. Remember this. Work on your starting point. Don't go below it. I give you another example. Today, and I said this yesterday in a different way. Today, for example, we have societies and communities. We go to schools. And mashallah, we interact with people, Muslim and non-Muslim. We take from them so much and we don't even ask them, hang on, I need to ask you, do you know what? Uh, do you believe that during Umrah, uh, a woman must cover her face or she must leave it open? And if you answer me wrong, I'm not buying from your shop. <laughs> Brother, you walk in, the water is there, you, you, you take it or whatever else you want to buy, you, you go to the till, you look at the woman who's not probably dressed properly, but you, you're just seeing a part of her. You hardly sometimes acknowledge her. You put your money, you take your stuff and you walk out and you don't even have a clue who that is. It could have been an enemy of Islam. Agreed? But there was something common here. There was you needed something and they were offering it. You took it and you took exactly what you needed and you went away. So you benefited from a non-Muslim. In what scope? within what you needed that was allowed for you to benefit from them. Alhamdulillah. And they will benefit from you. How many of you here are school teachers or doctors or lawyers or accountants or plumbers? Put up your hand. So many. MashaAllah. Okay. I tell you, I'm sure you have reached out to non-Muslims. Haven't you taught non-Muslims? Don't you have clients who are non-Muslims and so on? Yes, we do. Look at them nodding their heads. So we are part of the broader community. We have to, we must. We will respect them and they will respect us. But we have a difference in, re in deen and religion. And we know the limits and the lines and that's it. You know, but we, will, we are living in countries whereby we are faced with people who are very different from us. But you will have to catch a bus and maybe the driver is a gay. The driver is a gay. Well, big deal. I will walk in and say, thank you very much, sir. There you are. He might say, I'm not a sir, I'm a madam. Well, thank you, madam, and walk out. There you are. He's corrected you. But at the same time, you walked out. Were you now, no, I can't catch this bus, brother. I've got to go for Jumu'ah. The man who brought me here was actually a gay. Big deal. Subhanallah. I got my Jumu'ah. Because you're living in a society where you have to be realistic. You cannot just live a fantasy. You'll never live. Subhanallah. You will never live in society. Be real. Be a Muslim. Be a person who rises to the challenges in a beautiful way. Perhaps the person might look at you greeting them every day and every other day and they might come and tell you, I'd like to know what religion you follow. You have won. You have won. Why? Because the mere fact that I have been interacting in a way that made this person interested even by an inch, I've won. That is community, society. Look at this. I'm beaming positivity. But if I look and I say, I can give you one example. This is a real true story. My sister lives in the UK. So she drives a car and you know, they drive, mashallah, I don't know, with us, our women, including my wives and family members, they drive vehicles where, when it is needed, they go from point A to point B as females. Okay. So uh, someone phoned her and told her, and this is a true story, and said, hey, how are you? What's happening? How's things? She said, "Salamu alaikum. Oh, is everything okay? What's happening? My sister says, "Salamu alaikum." She says, okay, but is everything well and something and I needed this from you and I wanted whatever it was I can't recall, right? So she says, but I want to know why aren't you greeting me or replying my greeting? She says, because there is a sheikh in our community who has said that do not make salam to those women who drive cars. So I spoke to you, but I'm not going to make salam to you. Okay, and this is a reality. 
Wallahi. So the point was missed completely because number one, the Shaykh was actually meaning that you know what, don't even talk to them. Exactly how I started my talk. But it was misinterpreted because in real life you need them. Do you see? So they conveniently interpreted it to say, you know what, don't make salam, but everything else is okay. So I come to you, hey brother, what's happening, man? Everything okay? Hi, okay, hi. And you come back and say, okay. But now she understood there's something wrong. So then she explained, look, you know what? There are two things involved. One is that it's to do with, a, not just with a greeting, but that sheikh, whoever he is, is saying, don't even talk. Number one. Number two is, what about your own sisters who drive? What about the others who engage in the same? You have a difference of opinion. You have a difference of opinion. So you follow what you believe is correct. We follow what we believe is correct. But what we are talking about is something petty. It is minor. It is within a framework. We are allowed to have difference of opinion in this regard. Subhanallah, I give you a current live powerful example. Do you know in Nigeria there is a group of people who say Western education is haram. Fair enough, they are entitled to that opinion. But what they've done as a result is what is wrong. What is totally unacceptable. So now anyone who has a different opinion from theirs, they harm them, they attack them, they kill them, they, they try and they, they, they perhaps, as you may have known, they've kidnapped a, a whole lot of them. They've said so many things all in the name of Islam and it has nothing to do with Islam. Nil and zero. So this goes to show that we as an ummah sometimes, and I'd like to hope that these people, are, you know, they... I, I, I would like to think they are not taking what they have from Islam at all. It, in fact, they are serving some sort of an agenda that we don't understand as Muslimin. Something is seriously wrong. So if you look at the lesson we learn from that is when you have a difference of opinion, you are entitled to a difference. Yes, I have my opinion, you have your opinion, but how do I deal with you? When you have a difference and when I have a difference, I do not become barbaric. It does not mean because I differ with you now, you have no right to exist on the face of the earth. Because if that was the case, nobody would exist like I started. Nobody. Everyone would be fighting each other from the point of birth to the point of death. Even when we were little kids and we cried, meh, meh, perhaps what would happen? The father would say, I don't like the way he's crying. Allah protect us. My brothers and sisters, we need to understand each other. We need to understand the starting point that I'm talking about. That is the shahada. It is a thicker bond than that of blood. When I go anywhere, I try to my best to clean my heart for the sake of Allah. And to be able to walk out of the place saying, I love every single person there for the sake of Allah. And I know I have differences and I know I will. But I have a starting point of a shahada that is far stronger than anything else. So I will talk to you. I will greet you. I will this. And I will know sometimes that there are differences of opinion. But I still know that on the broader picture is such that we are all part of one ummah. So even if I have an opportunity one day to discuss these differences, I will do it in such a beautiful way that I will, I will try my best to put forward my opinion. And you know what? I will give you an opportunity to put forward yours if you so wish to do. In a way that we will be able to discuss maturely. Have you ever witnessed some, some of the countries that have opposition that is healthy? When I say opposition that is healthy, I'm talking of people who don't just oppose you because they are opposition. You know, some countries where there is immature democracy, they will just oppose you. If you say one plus one, no, it's two. Yes, it is two. Oh, sorry, it's three. Just because what you said, they want to be different. Some people think that opposition means whatever the others say, whether it's right or wrong, just oppose. And if that's the case, wallahi, that's very immature. But there are some who are slightly more mature. What happens? You say something, they say something. And you know what? You might end up agreeing with what they've said because they raised it. Subhanallah. They have an opinion. Someone tells you, you know what? Uh, we'd like to do this and build a school here and do this there and have that. And then they'll tell you, look, hang on, before you start, why don't you do the sanitation? I don't want you opposition. Who are you talking? No ways. You, you, you're probably thinking of my downfall. They are right. Do the sanitation first. Subhanallah. Then you sort everything else out. You're talking of big things. You've forgotten something from the plan. I'm just giving you an example. Thumb suck. So to be honest with you, a, re a, a real person and a Muslim would be able to pick up where they need correction because none of us are perfect. That's the thing. I need correction too. And subhanallah, I get it. And I get it from those who are genuine. They will tell me. They will talk to me. 
They will come to me. They will say, look, this is what happened. And this is what perhaps you could say this way. And sometimes I might discuss and they will go away with something they hadn't imagined. But if we were to get involved in fighting and attacking everyone whom we differed with, believe me, we would have wasted all our resources and we would get nowhere. Nowhere. And this is why I say, my personal example, I would prefer to take the goodness from everyone who's giving goodness. Like I said, we've had maths teachers, we've had biology teachers, we've had people who've been bakers and doctors and lawyers and whoever else who've been non-Muslim. We don't even share the shahada with them. But we benefited mutually from one another within a certain scope that was permissible within La ilaha illallah. Meaning the permissibility was within what I believed and subhanallah I reached out to them and they reached out to me in this beautiful way. And that's the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If that is the case with the non-Muslim, what about with the Muslim? What about with the Muslim? And this is why let's go back to the Quran and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we've spoken about the Meccan period and how he reached out to the non-Muslims. Even in Medina Munawwara, he had a special place in the masjid. And today there is a little pillar there known as Ustawana al Wufud. The pillar where he used to uh, welcome the uh, delegations that came. Uh, they were non-Muslim in most cases and they came in, they were given a, a place in the masjid, in, in one corner, in one place, and they were told to sit down, ask their questions, listen to what the Muslims are doing, listen to the sermons and so on. And this was how he reached out to them. Yet they were not Muslim, not at all. The bulk of them accepted Islam. Some of them did not. They went away without accepting Islam. This was, the, this was Allah's way of in telling us that we need to reach out to others as well. There were treaties and pacts signed by Allah, by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or on his behalf. And you need to know that these treaties were even with the non-Muslim. There were people who were non-Muslim living in Medina. Even at the time of the death of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. How did he treat them? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness, really. May He grant us that guiding light to be able to learn the balanced lesson. Take a look at Surah An-Naml. I'm sure you know of Surah An-Naml, the Surah of the Ant. I love that Surah, we love the entire Quran, but different Surahs give us different lessons. An-Naml, named after the Ant. To me, there is a beautiful example of unity in that Surah. Powerful. I tell you why. One ant noticed Sulaiman, the, the King Solomon alayhi salam, may Allah's peace be upon him, Prophet Sulaiman. One ant noticed that this man is coming with his army, so he announced to the rest of the ants. Do you know what we would do? Take our family, go to the side, say, I crush the rest of them. I think as an ummah, it probably might happen. May Allah safeguard us. That's why we are not ants, and that's why there's no Sulaiman in our midst. Do you get my point? The one ant tells the rest of them, لا يأدخلوا مساكنكم. قالت نملة يا أيها النمل دخلوا مساكنكم لا يحطمنكم سليمان وجنوده وهم لا يشعرون. The one ant tells the rest of them, enter your homes lest you are crushed by Sulaiman and his army and they would not even realize what they've done. Because you are minute, insignificant. So this was the community concern, concern for the whole society. If you look at the ants, what a great lesson we learn from the ants. They will carry something 10 times their size, but they do it together. The boulder I started the talk with. The ants have a communication method that is unique but togetherness, they will achieve destruction of a whole house if they want to destroy it. They can start eating and before you know it, they are so, so well connected under the entire foundation. They've been working quietly while no one was noticing and they finished up, do whatever they wanted. Allahu Akbar. How many of us can just work silently? Carry on, just carry on doing it. One day, the fruit of your effort will be seen. Maybe after you die. Can happen. Take a look at the ant again. You know they have a penal code amongst them and I love talking about this because it's a fact. If an ant lies, it faces execution. Did you ever know that? Oh, we've done the experiment we've, and we've seen it. Because I read it and then I, I wanted to see it for myself and I did it. You have a little crumb and the ant comes in. You've got to watch it happening. 
the ant comes in and it sees the crumb. The first thing it does, it goes back to its people and says, Hey, I seen a crumb. Let's go. Where is it? Uh, Hong Kong. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so now what happens? It goes back to the rest and the rest start coming. You pick up that crumb, take it away. Look at what happens. Do you know what they do? Amazing. I seen this with my eyes. They'll come. The one who brought the news, they will encircle him. And they close in the circle and then they all leave. And when they're all gone, there's only one ant remaining there dead. You lie to the whole community? Subhanallah. No, nobody is saying that you should kill each other here. Not at all. But it's just the lesson that we're learning. The lesson is they have a, a system. They will help one another. They won't cheat one another. They will be true to one another. They will be able to benefit one another. That's the ants. Look at the bee. The bee, another surah, an nahl and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the lesson in there is for community as well. Together they achieve, they obey the instruction of the queen bee and they carry on. And if you see those little dead bees, it's because of a reason that they are there. Go and read and you find out. Why are those dead bees just outside that whole hive? Let's go and find out why they are there. You may find out and you will be amazed and surprised. They don't accept lies and falsehood and cheating. Today we lie to each other, we cheat. We are not only false to each other, but we talk derogatory even about our own leaders. So then who is going to lead us? It's a problem. You have, if I have an issue with my father, for example, or he has an issue with me, the way we deal with it is... <clears throat> We sit down and talk to each other, just me and just him. And he tells me and I tell him. And then we come up with a solution or sometimes we may just agree to disagree and carry on. But we still love each other. That's my dad. We have a sickness in society today. And believe me, this extends through marriage and through everything else. You know, you get married, mashallah, normally, you know, your mother-in-law, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, I, you know, I just wish I was a mother-in-law, to be honest, so that I could show people how it's done. Allah <laughs> You know, your mother-in-law is from a different generation, different breed altogether. Sorry, not breed, but what I mean is, <laughs> subhanAllah, uh, from, a, from a different type of thinking sometimes, different upbringing and different, you know, generation. And she will definitely have a thing to say. She's been the queen in the kitchen for so long and now they're two queens, subhanAllah. And I always tell the brothers, brother, you know what? If you need to shift out, shift out. Believe me. If you have to, because to have two queens in one kitchen, you need to have two big thrones. <laughs> Believe me. It's not very, very possible unless they have big hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So uh, normally what happens, she'll say a thing or two that you, 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 know, you might not digest. But are you not witty enough, sharp enough to be able to solve the matter? You've got to live with her for the rest of your life. <laughs> Subhanallah. So you have to talk to her, communicate. She doesn't mean bad, I'd like to hope. I, I know there are some, may Allah safeguard us, not in Hong Kong, somewhere else. There are some who are so horrible. They just come in with, with this jealousy against this woman that you know what, you've come to take my son and guess what, I didn't ever want you. He should have just got married to X. But why did he get married to Y? Your life is doom and gloom. That's it. It happens. Believe me, I've come across cases I have cried. I've literally cried. Not cried for the movies we spoke about yesterday, but cried for reality. The condition. Ya ayyuhal insanu hal tabki lima abkani Araayta madha qad hasal fil alam al hayrani A poet says it so beautifully, Oh people, do you cry for the same thing that makes me cry? Don't you see what's going on across the globe? It doesn't it make you cry? Well, we all cry for the same thing. Subhanallah, tears. Tears roll down. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us really solutions to our weakness and our problems. So, like I was saying, we have one thing. She says, you know what? You, you don't just come down here at 9 o'clock like a queen. You must come down here at 6 o'clock and make the breakfast for everybody. Wow, mother-in-law. So you look at her, I hate you. And you walk out. Look, I'm talking reality. I'm speaking reality. I'm not speaking fib. Like I said, remove the gloves. We want to say something that affects you. So, so now what happens? You hate her. So you don't talk to her. So husband comes back. Your mom's such a horrible person. You know, she's nasty. You know, now you don't go and say exactly what she said. She was yelling at me in front of everyone. Look at how you're spicing things up. Mashallah. Okay, fine. But she meant it to say, you know what? Don't be lazy. But... She didn't know how to tell you. And guess what? You don't know how to understand her language. So now you've made a huge volcano out of nothing. 
And when a volcano erupts, it sweeps through not just the two of you, but through your children and through everybody else and a generation. And next thing you know, you might be separated and you might be divorced and all because according to you, your mom told you to get up at six o'clock and she was not a mom, but a mom-in-law. Ha, no. And that's it. Imagine you have to live as a society, community, and you can't even live with your own immediate family. Where are you going to go? How is your earth and your world going to operate? You will have a few more years on this globe to prove a point. You make the difference. Say, oh, mashallah, do you know what? And this brings me back to the other witty woman, you know. Uh, she was getting married and she goes to the, uh, the mother-in-law. Let me see if I can remember this one, subhanallah. She says, you know what? Uh, yeah. Wow, I am here. She, the mother-in-law started explaining to her that I don't want anything to change in this house. You don't come here and start doing things your way. Everything will happen the way we do things. So she said, no problem. Whoever was cooking will keep on cooking. Whoever was cleaning will keep on cleaning. Whoever was, you know, whoever, everyone will keep on doing this. <laughs> Subhanallah. And I will just entertain your son. That's it. So may Allah protect us. Now, the truth is, that's just a fairy tale. In real life, that don't happen. Because you have real people. And this is why your test is, how am I going to change this thing? And if you're going to be bad as well, you get two bad people, it makes it worse, it compounds the problem. So you are not going to be able to solve it. So what you need to do is apply wisdom, tact, make dua, read your two raka'at of salah, cry to Allah, Allah, I have a problem in front of me. Let's call it a challenge. Allah, help me to solve it. I'm just new in this home and I really need to do something because I have to live as a community and here we're just a family that can't even live together. Subhanallah. This is why even if you look at brothers or sisters, we love each other, don't we? We have differences. We have differences. I know one sheikh once said that two things can draw brothers apart, women and wealth. And I said, no, they can't. It depends on your heart. It depends on you. If you want, yes, some people say, well, you got a lot of wealth, you can, you know, brothers can be split. Sometimes you get married and the women can split you. But to be honest, if you have Iman and you have that underlying starting point I was talking about, when you are family, your starting point is far higher than just when you have the deen, although the deen is much more important. But you have something more to be able to be connected with that Allah has chosen. And you have parents, even if they are non-Muslim, to be good to them. That's something Allah has chosen. So imagine, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us solve our problems. My brothers and sisters, I want to pause and divert for a few seconds. And that is to tell you, if you have sons or daughters, please be easy on them. When I say be easy on them, I mean engage them in discussion. Convince them rather than instruct them. There was a time when you could just say do and they do it. Now do. You say why? I don't want to. And if you have a son of the modern 22nd century, he'll tell you, you say do. You say you do. Believe me, that's how it is. But the truth is, the reality is, if you engage in discussion, son, wow, there's a beautiful motor vehicle out there. An example. And it's going to cost you $20,000. I think that's too cheap for Hong Kong, isn't it? Okay, there you go. It's going to cost you $20,000. Son, I know you can do it. All you've got to do is go and work hard. Here's the job and just go there. Few months, you'll have $20,000. All I'm telling him is, son, don't be lazy. Get off your backside and start going to work. But I'm introducing it in such a beautiful way. Why? Because I've got a family to live. He's going to grow up and get married. He'll have children. He'll say, when my dad wanted to tell me how lazy I was, he talked to me about the car. I ended up buying it. And guess what? My laziness went. Wow. It's just a plan. It's a system. If we can do that with family, what about the ummah? Like I say, do constructive work. Love one another. If you do not feel the love for one another right here, right now, there's a problem. There is a problem. I don't know you, you may not know me. I am sure I will have differences with you. But guess what? I love you for the sake of Allah. You are my brother. You are my, my part of my ummah, our ummah. We belong to one major family. And you know what? If you're a human being, you are a human being and I am a human being too. So we share that in common. So I care enough for you to be able to engage you in beautiful discussion. Sometimes only through character. And sometimes only through a mere greeting. And sometimes only through a mere expression on my face. Wow, subhanallah. You know, we're living in the real world out there. It's not just a fairy tale where you sit on your own. No, you have a mission to accomplish. And that is to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless us. Let me give you a quick example from Surah An-Naml again. Many things are mentioned. I just want to say two in brief. One thing mentioned is rawasi. Rawasi. Rawasi meaning the mounts. Now, 
what is a mountain made of? A mountain is strong. It's powerful. You look at the huge mountains here in Hong Kong, mashallah, and you will find how big they are. Huge, amazing, massive. They are made up of small particles of grains of sand. If I have one or two grains, I'm sure they are here right now, they're just flying around, no one notices them. The same sand, when it is dense and so much, and all together doing the same thing, it makes a whole mountain. So if I'm my individual person, I achieve nothing as a community, because I'm worried about myself. I achieve absolutely no, even in family. You are there with your own agenda, I must be happy, bas. Well, that would mean even at the expense of the sadness of the others. Or should I say at the expense of the happiness of the others, so you make them sad because you want to be happy. It will not work that way. It does not work that way. Do you know Allah has kept something amazing with regards to happiness and sadness? Can I quickly tell it to you? You get more happiness by making others happy than you would by making them sad. Think about it. That's Allah's plan. If you serve someone, you help them, you reach out to them, you are courteous to them, you make their day. Your day is made before that. Believe me, your day is made. That's Allah's plan. Why? Because you are supposed to live together. Your test is, جَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَرَفُوا Allah says, we have made you peoples and tribes in order for you to know one another, to be able to fulfill the rights of one another, to understand one another, not to trample on one another and oppress one another and frown upon one another, but for a mission. And we've just mentioned it. So one grain of sand would be blown away by the wind, but the strongest of gale force will not blow away a whole mountain. Take a look at the other thing mentioned in the surah. Allah speaks about anhar. You know, whether it's rivers or even let's say the lakes or let's for example use the, that of the sea or the ocean. What is it made up of? H2O. Do you agree? One droplet of water, one small speck, H2O, I don't think I'd be able to see it. It's here in the atmosphere. You can see I'm sweating, mashallah, 97%. Today it looks like 101% humidity. <laughs> We're like swimming here, mashallah, well I am. So, subhanallah, if you take a look at it, it evaporates so quickly. But if it's together in a cup, what happens? You boil the whole thing, what evaporates is very little, and you won't even notice it, and you still enjoy your tea, and you boil your water. Subhanallah. And if you have the whole ocean, what would happen to it? You would find it, it can actually, you know, it's a force to be reckoned with. Not only do the ships move on it and so on, but if, may Allah protect us, if that thing becomes a bit wild and the wave actually comes up, it creates a tsunami and a disaster, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist those who were affected by the tsunamis in the past. And may He make us not from amongst those who will be affected by it, neither now nor in the future. May Allah protect us all. So, my brothers and sisters, look at the power. Where did it come from? If it was one droplet, nothing. Imagine if those had to fight with each other. I always sit and think, you know, if sand particles or water particles had in-laws and, and family members, they would all be together, you know, separated completely a long time ago. Just as well they're not. Imagine. Imagine listening to the sand. I can't imagine. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. Each one, you busy saying, aren't you supposed to be a, a mountain? Allahu Akbar. But that's what we're doing. We're supposed to be a mountain known as an ummah. But each one of us are wah, 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 with each other. The top and the bottom, the male and the female, the relative and the non-related, the scholar and the dollar, everything. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. My brothers and sisters, really, I, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a lesson at least from what has been said. I, as you know, I'm very passionate about this and I feel very, very strongly about working positively and about affecting people's lives in a positive way. You want to educate, go out and reach the skies. In fact, the skies are too low. You can actually reach beyond the skies. You want to do something, achieve. Your achievement is not connected to the lack of achievement of someone else. It's connected to your hard work and the help of Allah. Remember this. So if by me telling the whole world these guys are like this and those guys are like that, it's no merit of mine. Believe me, half the time or more than half the time I might be wrong. To be honest with you, I might be wrong. I've achieved nothing but I can show people the way in a positive way. And this is why I want to end saying something. 
Okay, I know we're talking of community and society and building this society in a beautiful way, speaking about unity and so on, because that's the whole theme. It says ID unity. And I also added something, com unity. Everything is to do with unity, subhanallah. But I want to add something very important. You know, if you find yourself pointing fingers at others in a derogatory way, calling them bad and dirty names, you need to know that shaitan is getting hold of you. Because you are not positively contributing to your own life, nor to the lives of others. I am not saying don't discuss your differences, but I am saying do so maturely. And remember, you will never ever think exactly the same. But learn to love one another at least where you are, have things in common by the help of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And be careful of those who always try to just label and name and so on and so forth and do things in a very dirty way, trying to harm the ummah and trying to harm humanity at large just by calling people names in such a bad way that we crumble and we become little particles of dust rather than the entire mountain. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and may He grant us goodness and may He open our doors. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdihi subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.